How are you? Oh, wow, it's cold out there. Jesus. Plus seven, it says. It says plus seven. It had, well, on the Met Office, it says it's going to feel like about four this morning, and I can well, I can well understand that, because it is so cold. We're mid-May, May the 16th, and it's bloody freezing. Anyway, today, I'm on my usual commute to work, and uh, I thought I'd have a quick chat with you about my new helmet. Uh, what's it like? You know, comfort levels, all the rest of it. So this is the uh, LS2 701 Explorer, MX701, sorry, Explorer. So this wasn't given to me, this is not a paid promotion in any way. Uh, this was a fair and square purchase and it's a fair and square account of what I think of this helmet. It's a full carbon helmet. Um, weight is 1450 grams plus or minus 50 grams either way uh, add this to it it's a hell of a lot more than that so i'm not bothered about the plus or minus either way it is it is pretty lightweight uh, even you know even with the camera strapped to it it's still quite a lightweight helmet um, and i wanted an adventure helmet with a peak but i didn't want to pay absolutely you know Sky high premium prices for a helmet, uh, mainly because on the uh, more expensive helmets like the Showy Hornet uh, and like the Arai Tor X4, they don't have the drop down sun visor in them, which this helmet has. So that was uh, key criteria for buying a adventure bike helmet. So yeah, this. Um, just open the lid up so it's got that little drop down visor there which is perfect actually well quite close to perfect there my one complaint about it uh, and it's not the operation of it because the operation of it is really easy it's just that little thumb slide there it's quite easy to find and it's just straight up straight down my one criticism of the sun visor is that it needs to be half a centimetre longer. Can you see that? That little gap along the bottom. So, uh, I mean, you can... It, it, it is a little bit distracting. But I dare say it's something that you'll just get used to. But uh, at least it's got the sun visor in it. So, I can wear this sun visor with this tinted visor that I bought um, quite comfortably. And it's not, uh, you know, it doesn't make it too dark out there. So you can pull the visor down and it will stay shut just with the wind pressure on it. But there is this little latch as well. Just move the camera forward slightly because it's just in the way. Yeah, so if you just drop it down, it will vent. Um, which is fine, you know, on those days where it's just wet and quite humid and you just want a bit more vent into the helmet. Um, but if you just click it shut, then uh, you know damn well it's not going to come open. I've not had any issues with the helmet flying out, with the visor flying open uh, when I've been riding, regardless of how fast I'm going. So that isn't uh, something you have to worry about. Lots of different visor options on the market as well. Uh, and they're all about 30 quid each. So there's plenty of vents on the helmet. There's two at the front, two at the top, uh, two on this, on each side of it as well. The issue that I've had with them is they, they can be a little tricky to find. The operation of them is really easy, just slide forward, slide back, so forward for close, back for open. The through ventilation of the helmet I don't think is that brilliant really, it could do with being better. So it is uh, DOT certified, uh, it is ACU certified and it is also, uh, is it ECE, the brain injury one? So it's it's certified uh, for all of those things, so it is a pretty safe helmet. Uh, Price-wise, this cost me £319.99. £319.99. 
If you see one cheaper, do not buy it. It's the model previous to this one. And the fit is slightly different. I didn't get on with it, so I sent it back. Uh, and also, it doesn't have the cutouts for your, um, uh, your speakers for your Cardo. This one does have the cutouts, but I did have to modify them slightly, as in just make them a little bit bigger, just so I could fit the speakers in. So noise-wise, bear in mind I've not got a tall screen on this bike at all now, so I am getting full wind blast. But noise-wise, it's really pretty good actually. It's not a loud helmet. When my speakers are in it, uh, and I'm using these uh, Oxford filter buds, earplugs, uh, it's really, you know, I don't have to have the volume full blast at all. Uh, and even with the peak, it's, it's incredibly stable in the wind. Even more so actually, because what I did, uh, so I had this screen on, and I went out and tested it and I thought, well, I'm getting a bit of wind noise around the peak, which, you know, you're bound to get because the wind hits it around the peak level. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll put the old screen on and just check that out and see, see how that feels. So I did that, but I found that with that screen, it was throwing the wind straight up underneath the peak and it was lifting my head, uh, which was a bit disconcerting. I, I find it better with a lower screen on and, and you know it's better and more stable just getting the full-on wind blast. The camera on this helmet sits slightly lower uh, so this is uh, mounted on a chin mount so if you're uh, uh, if you're looking for a camera mount for your helmet if you're vlogging uh, this is made by chin mounts and it's specific for this helmet. It's a a nice snug fit all the way around the head. It is bedding it a little bit, a little bit more now. Oh, just pull out, mate! Just pull out. <coughs> Unbelievable, isn't it? Unbelievable. So yeah, there are vents all over the helmet, um, but and you know, exhaust vents at the back there. I just think the the with that amount of vents on a helmet, you'd think that the throughput of air. Uh, and the airflow around the head would be just that little bit better. Other features to do with this helmet, it does have the double D strap. It's got the quick release padding pulls on the, on the padding, uh, the cheek pads. There isn't uh, a standard press stud for you to clip it onto. There's a magnetic one, which does work very well. Uh, but it's just a bit of a faff to find it and get used to it. There's a chin curtain at the front, which is always there. You know, you don't have to pull it back like you do on the shark. Uh, and there's also a little bit of a neck curtain as well, just to stop drafts getting up inside the helmet in the winter. But there's no vibration from the peak. It's really good in the wind. It does, as I've said earlier, generate a little bit of noise around the helmet but you know it is a peak sticking out in the wind it's bound to do that um, and you know I mean why do most of us buy adventure helmets most of us won't be doing gnarly off-road work or will we you know they're, they're designed for a being able to uh, uh, you know if there's mud flying around to keep keep the mud from coming down and landing on your visor they're also designed to sort of push bushes out of the way and also just to keep a bit of sun out of your eyes as well when it's high uh, but you know that, that's not the reason most of us are buying these helmets most of the most of us are buying them because they go with the image aren't we well that's why I bought mine <laughs> Uh, if I've forgotten anything, I'll double check my notes on the helmet when I get to work. If I've forgotten anything, I will, um, I'll tell you that bit at the end, when I'm on my return commute. Now, I did forget to tell you about the, uh, let me turn that down. I did forget to tell you about the visor issues. Uh, not, not major issues, don't get me wrong, it, they're not, um, you know they're not deal breakers in my opinion it's really quite a fiddly thing to change so there's a screw this side screw this side you have to take those out you don't have to take the peak off that's not necessary 
uh, there's a little anchoring thing on the top there that, that holds the visor in place at uh, the yeah the peak in place while you take the visor off um, but like I say the, the biggest problem is just trying to relocate those screws when you when you change the visor they are a bit of a fiddle to get in and been a bit of a fat fingered clumsy oaf um, yeah I, I do find it a bit of a struggle other than that I would say absolutely perfect really I do love the helmet I love the fit I love the way it looks uh, I love the style of it, um, its form, its function, its build quality is also, you know, absolutely brilliant, love it. It's glasses friendly, so if you're a spectacle wearer, you can wear spectacles with this. I, I still don't like wearing glasses, I'll wear contact lenses instead. Um, but you can wear glasses with it but when I wore mine on Saturday you do get sort of pressure from all you know all odd places pushing down on the bridge of your nose and you know into the side of your head and all, uh, yeah it's just it's just not comfortable is it I, I do feel for people who wear glasses and can't wear contacts for whatever reason but yeah they are a they are a nightmare with helmets yeah that's about it really uh, on the LS2 MX701 Explorer helmet uh, if you're considering upgrading or changing or downgrading or whatever to a new helmet for whatever reason then it's well worth a look <laughs>